Many of the advances that have taken place since that of Dr. Goddard's first rocket in the 1920s have emerged from NASA Lewis Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Larry Deal, chief of the Space Propulsion Technology Division, gives us insight to the technology and the future of space propulsion. We in Lewis of Space Propulsion Technology Division are striving to advance the technologies that will open pathways for the nation's ride to space. We conduct research and develop technology for launch vehicles, space transfer vehicles, satellites, and space platforms. This wide range of applications requires a propulsion research and technology program that encompasses a number of options. Chemical, nuclear, electric propulsion, as well as far-term concepts like laser and microwave propulsion. Our current emphasis is on chemical and electric propulsion systems. In some ways, visions of the future begin with us because we must answer the questions asked when these systems are still on the drawing board. Let me share with you a vision of what is possible in the next 20 to 30 years and what is needed to get there we begin with new Earth orbit propulsion systems that will benefit the space station freedom. Construction and long-term operation of the orbital outpost will depend on an advanced Earth to orbit transportation system that will make regular trips to and from low Earth orbit. An improved shuttle will transport Freedom's workforce. Economical, low thrust rockets designed for reliability and flexibility will be used to counteract atmospheric drag and vibrations. A powerful unmanned cargo vehicle will carry materials and supplies from Earth. Low thrust rockets will also help enhance our knowledge of Earth and space by keeping satellites properly located and correctly oriented and by assisting the unmanned spacecraft that will map and explore the solar system as they achieve planetary orbit. Using advanced expander cycle engines, space transfer vehicles based in Earth orbit will enable us to maneuver freely in space, working, traveling, and exploring. They'll aid us in creating another key path to the future a lunar base. On the moon, we'll learn the necessary skills for survival, an experience that will prepare us for a more rigorous but even more rewarding ride. A ride that will take us ever further from home until finally, we take our first steps on Mars. Interplanetary spacecraft will use a variety of propulsion methods that offer the high efficiency and long running times needed to achieve our goal of transforming a distant planet into a self-sufficient outpost. Along with advanced chemical and nuclear thermal propulsion systems, many spacecraft will be propelled by electric thrusters and powered by solar or nuclear energy. These plans for the future require prediction of the performance of such propulsion systems. Exact simulation is necessary. Often the computer serves as a cost-effective starting point. Taking advantage of Lewis Research Center's high-performance computers and advanced networks, division members develop computational tools and techniques that model a propulsion system and simulate the complex physical processes taking place during its operation. The speed of propellants as they flow through the turbopump, changes in temperature within the combustion chamber, 
and the onset of turbulence as exhaust gases exit the nozzle can all be predicted quickly and economically through computation. Computers, however, cannot do it all. Fully understanding the performance of propulsion components and systems often requires experimental testing. In Lewis's experimental facilities, research hardware is assembled that possesses the important characteristics of a component or system. They then simulate the range of conditions that will be encountered during operation and measure the effects of these conditions on the test article. Teams conduct propulsion experiments from state-of-the-art control rooms where computerized systems automatically control and monitor facility operations during tests. In many facilities, optical diagnostic systems are used as tools of measurement. Because laser beams can withstand higher temperature and are less intrusive, optical diagnostics help researchers probe the physics of combustion and flow without affecting the phenomena. Lewis's test facilities have supported investigations of many new concepts and technologies stronger thrust chamber material, better cooling techniques, efficient propellants, reliable ignition methods, and durable chemical and electric rocket engine components. The Electric Propulsion Laboratory is a world-class space simulation facility containing simulation chambers in a variety of sizes. The vacuum in these chambers is comparable to that of the cold, highly charged vacuum of space, created by an immense system of pumps and cryo panels. This laboratory makes it possible to predict performance of spacecraft elements, such as solar arrays, as well as electric propulsion devices, like ion thrusters and magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters. During testing, researchers gather data to predict performance life and efficiency. To allow full utilization, the Electric Propulsion Laboratory's vacuum chambers are divided into several isolated sections, each accessed by a port. These separate ports make it possible to install or remove experiments without affecting the vacuum in the rest of the chamber and to conduct more than one test at a time. Lewis Research Center's largest chemical rocket testing complex is the Rocket Engine Test Facility. Its versatile system for supplying cryogenic propellants and a safe and effective method of cooling exhaust gases and removing contaminants make it possible to test a wide variety of technologies. Technologists in the Rocket Engine Test Facility operate chemical rockets at sea level and altitude conditions to better understand the performance. They study the behavior of turbo pump components and explore ways to enhance their performance and life by simulating the conditions in a rocket engine turbo pump. By conducting repeated test firings, they determine how various material, cooling techniques, and fabrication methods will help rocket engines withstand extremely high temperatures and pressures. Working toward goals of top performance as well as efficiency, economy, and dependability required for the large variety of propulsion systems Members of the Space Propulsion Technology Division gather knowledge, test ideas, 
and solve problems using computers, experiments, and diagnostics. It's an endless spiral of exploration that draws ever closer to the ideals of exact simulation and perfect prediction. Vacuum chambers, computer codes, test rigs, and highly skilled people. These are some of the ingredients that allow the Space Propulsion Technology Division to contribute to our nation's ride to space. We know our travels are only the first steps of a long and difficult journey. The vision we have shared with you is only the beginning. The solar system and the universe are waiting to be explored. Propulsion will lead the way. We are proud to help pave the way for our nation's ride to the future. Propulsion technology will reach beyond the space shuttle as we continue the technologies for communications, Earth observations, and Earth space operations. The ability to launch and explore from the platform of Space Station Freedom and a lunar base will help us ultimately reach Mars and other outer planets. Roger, and we see all that, it looks good to us. Okay. Panel, that was one fantastic ride. Well, I wish we could have been along. Yeah, I highly recommend it. <laughs>